We go to the third period of the seventh game, 1994 Stanley Cup Final, with the New York Rangers leading the Vancouver Canucks. Three to one at Madison Square Garden. Canucks game coverage brought to you in part by NRS, National Real Estate Service. Making tracks with house by mouse. Visit your local office for details. I'm Jim Robson with Tom Marshide as we go to period three. Will it be the last period in a long season? Well, Jim, right now the fans are chanting, let's go Rangers. Out in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia, there's a lot of fans chanting, go Canucks, go. And they need to go in a big way now. They're down by two goals and a period of hockey to play in the seventh and deciding game of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Well, there'll be lots of standing in this third period as these fans just sort of sense that the long New York Ranger drought is coming to an end. But there's 20 minutes to go, at least, in this hockey game. As we start the third period, the team's at a strength. The puck to shot in the Vancouver zone. McLean defending to our left. Leaves the puck for Babbage, who banks it around on the right boards. Tim Hunter dumps it in from center ice. Antoski going in on Lidster, hammers him in the corner. Puck goes in back of the net. Leach got possession. Didick bumped Graves. Puck is kept in along the boards by Antoski. Hunter threw it in front, and it tipped away to Anderson. Anderson coming to center with Graves. Anderson into the Vancouver zone. Goes wide. Centered the puck. Graves shot. And it tipped just wide. Play still deep in the Vancouver zone. Now the puck cleared out. And back forward is Zuboff. He's had two assists tonight. Messi and Graves have each had a goal and an assist. Pavel Burry goes back to get the puck. He's been held off the score sheet. Well, he has had an assist on the Linden goal. But hasn't had really, really good scoring chances yet in the game. Fred Hedekin, deep in his own zone, turning away from Mateau. Hedekin, what a addition to this Vancouver team. And he's a young defenseman with tremendous skating skills. But he's having trouble getting out on this shift. Hed Mateau centering the puck. And it bounces around in front of the net. Greg Adams brings it up. Adams at center, shoots the puck in deep. Bounces off the end boards. They'll battle hard all through this final period. Adams goes down in a pileup deep in the Ranger zone with Kevin Lowe. As the puck rolls into Vancouver territory to Yerke Lume. Rangers lead 3-1 to one as Lume shoots the puck in deep. Leach got back to tip it to the boards. And now it's put around behind the New York goal. Kept in Ranger territory to Adams back of the net. Leach knocked it off his stick. But Trevor Linden holds it in. Wheels and shoots. Richter caught it. Throws it aside for Leach. Linden races in after him as Leach played it out to the neutral zone. Noonan just missed it outside the Canuck blue line. Now he goes in on Yerke Lume and bodies him in the corner. Lume comes up with the puck, banks it around on the boards for Jeff Cortnell. Cortnell starting down the left wing. McTavish catching up with him and Keegan and cuts him off. But the Canucks regain possession. Lafayette's pass across ice for Diddick too far ahead and Leach playing more than anyone in this game got the puck out of trouble now the Rangers make a full change 2.15 gone in the third period Rangers 3, Canucks 1 a long pass might develop into an icing Wells gets the puck, icing is called on Vancouver the score, the Rangers 3, the Canucks 1 this is NHL Stanley Cup final action from New York Face off in the Canuck zone. Again, Rangers get the draw. Wells, long shot. McLean stopped that. Controls the puck so well. Banks it around on the boards. Babbage couldn't pick it up. Linden, who's playing such a strong game for the Canucks tonight, couldn't get the puck out along the boards. Newton moves in. Shoots. McLean stopped it. Rebound in front of the net. Battle for the puck. And it's kicked away by Babbage. But it's still in the Vancouver zone. Babbage goes to it on the boards. Battling with McTavish. And the elbows up. Finally, the puck is clear, but not out. Here's a chance in front of McLean, and he sweeps the puck aside uh, right by the goal line, and it's whistled down as McLean somehow came up with the puck right by the line. Oh, boy, that could have been it right there. A close call. The Rangers throwing everything at the Canucks. So much talent, so much experience. New York can smell it now. They know if they can put together their best 20 minutes of the season. They will be Stanley Cup champions. Oh, and it was such a close call right off the post. And that is puck luck. You know, you think of puck luck, you scoring goals. But you need some puck luck, too, at the other end, in the defensive zone. And Kirk McLean was helped out by the goaltender's best friend. 
as the puck went right off the post, right back to McLean. And he was able to keep it from going goal line. Brian Noonan, who's had a strong game tonight, maybe his best game of the series, came awfully close to making it 4-1. to And he hasn't scored in 13 games. He's a hard-working, hard-hitting forward, picked up from Chicago in a late trade. Like most of these players on these two teams came via trades. Played deep in the Vancouver zone. Rangers with a 3-1 lead. Keep putting the pressure on. A loose puck in front bounces away to Jelena. Jelena up on the right to Momesso, who's been one of the Canucks' best in the playoffs. Puts the puck in deep. Jelena going in after it in the corner. Getting help from Ronning. Jelena in the corner. Try to center it. it. Tipped in behind the net. Kevin Lowe controls there. Up to Messier at center. Messier put the puck in the Vancouver zone as he bumps with Sergio Momesso. Now they both go to the benches on a change. Three and a half minutes gone, third period. Puck cleared outside the Vancouver line. Shot back in. Now being brought out by Hedekan. Tipped at center. Ronning couldn't reach it. Jelena couldn't pick up the puck. Threw a body check in the neutral zone, but the Rangers regained possession. They're in control here with a 3-1 lead. Kovalev ducked away from a check. Shot the puck in. Brown puts it on the boards. It's deflected to the line and out. Shot back in by Lidster. Now Vancouver regained possession as Jeff Brown plays it to Craven at center. Up to Adams. Try to get it to Pavel Bury. Working in on goal. He's hauled down. And there will be a penalty as Bury was hauled down, breaking to the front of the net. Well, if there's ever a, a good penalty to take, Essa Chikin and just took it for the Rangers. Pavel Bury came out of nowhere. And that's vintage Bury. You wonder where he is sometimes. And then all of a sudden, the Russian rocket is on the attack. That would have been a great scoring chance. Bury able to steal the puck from Kikinen. Kikinen knew he had to haul him down. Now the Canucks must make their move. They're down by two. They're on the power play. The score, the Rangers three, the Canucks one. More playoff hockey action in a moment. Vancouver with a man advantage for the second time in the game. Over one so far tonight as Brems to center. Shoots the puck in the New York zone. It bounces behind Richter to the corner to his left. Players crash in to try and come up with the puck along the boards. It's still in skates near the corner to the left of Richter. Ronning gets the puck, goes back of the goal. Plays it out to the point. Oh, misfire there by Brown. Now Courtville passes. They score at the side of the net. It's Trevor Linden who has made it a 3-2 hockey game with his second goal of the night. They had to have it. The power play. Pat Quinn went with four forwards and one defenseman. Jeff Brown, the only defenseman. Bure back to the point. What a setup by Jeff Cortnell. Cortnell, who could have pulled the trigger in the slot. Just a fantastic play by Cortnell. Cortnell back to Linden. Linden at the side of the net. And there it was. Cliff Ronnie making the feed to Cortnell. It's now a 3-2 hockey game. The second goal of the game for the great captain of Vancouver, Trevor Linden. Wonderful pass by Jeff Cortnell for Richter. And here we go. Lots of time yet. 15-10 remaining in the third period. The game in 12th of the playoffs scored by number 16, Trevor Linden. The assists to number 14, Jeff Cortnall, and number 7, Cliff Ronick. Time 4.50. 4.50 of the third period, the power play goal that has the Canucks within one. Our congratulations to a contestant in a power play contest, L. Martin of Laclahash, British Columbia, with an entry from Cheerios and Overweighty, wins $108. L. Martin of Laclahash, $108 for that power play goal by Trevor Linden. Only a third power play goal in the series for the Canucks. Oh, what a game Trevor Linden is having tonight. you got to count on your best players elevating their play, leading the way. The Rangers players have done it. We talked about them, Leach and Graves and Messier. And now it's Trevor Linden, Courtney, Ronnie. They're starting to come back. The score, the Rangers three, the Canucks two from Madison Square Garden. Five minutes gone, third period. Rangers three, Canucks two. The series far from over. Can you believe this? Oh, there's no quit in this Canuck team. They are showing big time character. They're fighting back. They've never had the lead. They've never tied the game. But they're within one now. Playing the Vancouver zone, Lume with the puck. Plays it up the middle to Cortnell at center. 
Now to Lafayette. In over the line. Coming in on goal. Richter made the save. And the rebound is taken aside by McTavish after a fine move by Young Lafayette. Back comes Tikkanen. Over the bank. Over line. Dumps it on the left boards for Zubov. He's bumped along the board. The puck went back of the net to Craig McTavish. McTavish put it into the corner. Trying to get a return pass as Brian Glenn's all over him on the end boards. They battle for the puck. It's in their skates on the end board. Vancouver zone. Finally pinned there long enough to stop the play. That gives us an opportunity, Jim, to go back and talk a little bit more about that Canucks power play goal. Pat Quinn has made so many astute moves during the playoffs. And he made a great move as he put the four forwards out there on the power play. He knows he needs scoring punch. That put Ronnie on the power play in place of Yerky Lume, dropping Pavel Burry back to the point, and lo and behold, Ronnie makes the play into the slot to Cardinal. Cardinal over to Linden, and Linden snapped it home. It's now 3-2. Can you stand it? A great series and a great seventh game right now. Lafayette almost tied it too a moment ago with a great rush that Richter stopped. 12 minutes, 53 seconds left on the clock. Urged on by the scoreboard. The fans are chanting, let's go Rangers. They have a 3-2 to two lead. Face off of zone to the left of McLean. In this very warm building, the goaltenders under so much pressure in this kind of a game. Linden wins a face off for McTavish. Lume takes the puck back of his goal. Lume from behind McLean, starting out on the right side. Puts the puck off the boards to center to Lafayette. Couldn't control it. Now it's tipped up to Momesso or Cortnell. Scoops it to Lafayette on the right boards. Now to Linden, fighting off a check. Couldn't get a shot away. Now backhands it to the goaltender who covered it up. And Richter stops the play as Linden gets into a little exchange at the side of the net with Noonan. 12 minutes, 31 seconds. A lot of time still remaining in the third period. 3-2 the score. Leach, Graves, and Messier have scored Ranger goals. Linden has scored both goals for the Vancouver Canucks. Mike Keenan, who has just played the Dickens out of Mark Messier and Brian Leach. And they're out there again. Two war horses. Messier, the great team captain, brought to New York to bring him a Stanley Cup. Will he be successful? We'll find out soon enough. He wins a face-off in the Ranger zone, and Anderson starts out with the puck on the right side. Now Messier picked up the puck in over the Vancouver blue line on the left to Graves. Shoots wide. Puck bounces around to Lipster, shooting from the right point. It's blocked in front of the net. The Canucks start out. Linden at center ice. Behind the play, Anderson got away with an interference that was very blatant, but the play goes right on. He tackled Cortnell on that rush, but everybody's doing it. Anything goes. Hudson's Bay rules, as they say. The puck is cleared down the ice by Lidster. This will be an icing on the Rangers. Boy, was that blatant interference by Anderson hauling down Cortnell in that rush up the ice. Yeah, but Jim, you know, that is terrible officiating. I can see it if it's the game is tied up at 3-3. Then you let it go. You let it Hudson Bay rules. I mean, you cannot just tackle a guy. The Canucks have a chance, a potential two-on-one. Cortnell jumps up there to give Linden a play. And he just hauled down right in front of the referee and no call. You know, that's a joke, really. Brian Leach, one point tonight. And it was a big one, the first goal of the game. And he now, as we told you, has 34 points. The record by a defenseman is 37 in a playoff year held by Paul Coffey. Face off to the right of Richter in the Ranger zone. 11.53 left on the clock. Rangers lead 3-2. Puck cleared to the blue line and out. Gerald Diddick turns with it at center ice, dumps it back in. Richter missed it back of the net. Zuboff picked it up as Ronning bumped him. The puck came just outside the line, picked up by McTavish. Now at the bank of her blue line, passing it off. Noonan moving in. His pass is blocked by the sprawling Gerald Diddick, and the puck is dumped out. Bury went after it, couldn't pick it up. We've got Bury, Ronning, and Momesso. A different combination for the Canucks right now. Kick it, wing at center, carries to the Vancouver line. Just stopped at the line and dumped it in as he's bodied by Diddick and they jab at each other. Play still in the Canuck zone. Now the puck is back out at center and Leach just dumps it in. Taken in back of the net by Babbage. On the right to Diddick, back to Babbage. Babbage a long pass up the middle, tipped away by Larmer. Now up at the Vancouver line to Kovalev coming in, holding the puck. Try to pass, it's blocked by Diddick. And then the Ranger players tripped up and crashes into the goal. Larmer went right into the net. 
And the Vancouver goal came off its support. Well, they get a whistle. Kovalev, uh, so fancy, so talented, the Russian, looking for Larmer. Larmer going to the net. Bure just put an arm lock right around his throat. That could have been a penalty against Vancouver, too. Uh, there's been a lot of that tonight. So that maybe offsets the one Anderson on Cortnell. And yeah, this was we a better chance. This was even a better scoring chance. And McLean showing his agility, jumping high in the air to let Larmer just slide right under him into the Vancouver net. 10.54 left of the clock. Puck shot to the New York line. Adams going in from the left wing is checked by Lidster. Took the puck off his stick. Adams fights for it again. It's underneath a pileup of players down on the ice. As Adams has Lidster underneath him. Lidster from Kamloops. Adams from Nelson. Former teammates in Vancouver. All the natives are getting restless behind us, too. Uh, we got uh, some guys yelling and screaming at each other. As long as they don't yell at us now, Tom. Well, uh, that's uh, as long as they don't start fighting. Uh, they've come over the railing here, and we could all be in a big a big battle. But that's all right, Jim. You keep calling the play-by-play. -play you, you, you take care <laughs> of that part, okay? And I'll take care of the muscle part. Oh, great. I'm glad you <laughs> volunteered. <laughs> They're four aside to face off in the Vancouver zone. Outer edge of the circle to the left of McLean. Lafayette against Messier. Rangers get possession. Lowe with a shot. Hit the post. And the puck bounces to Lidster. Kevin Lowe rang it out the goal post on McLean's stick side. And it's still 3-2. to two. Puck cleared into New York territory. Lidster back to pick it up. Lidster's coming on in the late stages of this game. Now the puck in the neutral zone picked off by Yerky Lume. Up to Jeff Cortnell. Over skates at the New York line. Bodied by Lowe. And the puck goes to Graves. On the left to Mark Messier. Takes it back into his own zone. He's had a goal and an assist in this huge game tonight. Now the Rangers start out. Messier down the right boards. This will be dangerous. Coming in with Graves. The pass to Graves. Shot. Hit. Babbage. And the puck bounces to Cortnell. Cortnell lost it at his own line. Canucks on a sloppy change again, but Didick gets the puck at his own blue line. Turning inside. Plays it up to center to Craven, or Bure, who's checked off the puck by Leach. And back comes Tikkanen, quickly into the Vancouver zone on Hedekan. They spin each other around. Tikkanen gets the puck back of the net, making moves now to Larmer. Shot wide from a sharp angle as it went through the crease. A glove flies in the air along the boards in the Vancouver zone. As Hedekin got the puck in the corner. And there's some real heavy hitting back at the Vancouver net as Larmer was knocked down. Nice move by Pavel Bury into the New York zone. Coming in and he's grabbed by Zuboff without getting a shot. Who was it ever a war out there? Play still in the New York zone. Ticket and bumped by Bury. Ticket and goes back to the net. Ticket in starting out. Carries to center. Gives it to Leach. In over the Vancouver line. Leach moving in, couldn't get a good shot, and Brown now takes the puck back of the net. 7.17 left on the clock. Down the left side, Brown over the New York line. A launch, they stopped it. And the rebound is cleared away from in front by Noonan. Put it off the boards to center to Mateau. Mateau into the bank of his own. Ronning cut him off, and Glenn goes to the puck back of the net. Dropped it off for Lume, who's in traffic. And the puck is turned over to Mateau in the right corner. Mateau making moves behind the net. Trying to come in front. Now a shot by Noonan. Stop. And Ronning gets the puck up to Jelena. Right side at center. Great action. Jelena to Ronning. Coming in. Back to Jelena. Shoots. Hit the oh. side of the net. And the puck is scooped away from the goal tree. And the puck is still in Ranger territory along the board. And now it's out of play. Some high sticking after the whistle by Noonan. Oh, Jelena almost tied it up. You know, is this a... 94, the closest the Vancouver Canucks ever came to winning the Stanley Cup. Somebody's going to win. Too bad somebody has to lose. 3-2, to two, Rangers lead right now. Play in the Vancouver zone. Diddick back for the puck. Graves moves in on him. Diddick from back of the goal. Forced to the boards. Plays it up towards Lafayette. Now it's finally out to the neutral zone. Back into Canuck territory. Babbage goes back to get the puck. Babbage from behind the goal. Puts it off the left boards to Cortnell. Cortnell at center to Linden. Through the neutral zone, back to Cortnell. Shoots from the left wing. Richter stopped it. Cortnell threw it in front. Oh, a shot at the post. 
a great opportunity for Lafayette, and it's still three to two. Lay in the zone. Now the puck shot in range of territory. I think it was Lafayette who hit the post, and it's still three to two. New York. Oh, what a hockey game! What a series. Play in the neutral zone. Low dumped the puck in. Red ahead again. Goes back for it. 5:40 left on the clock. Kovalev moving in. Knocked to the ice without getting a shot. Rangers keep it in. McLean moved for a shot that went wide. Now it's to the right point. Passed in the right boards. A centering pass into a crowd in front. McLean down. The puck went back of the net. Centered again into a crowd. Having where he picks it up. Quickly comes to center. And the play is stopped because the Vancouver goal is off its support. Oh, can you take this? This is not a game for the faint of heart. Oh, my goodness gracious. The action has been stupendous. This is a game, I'll tell you, a storybook, Hollywood script, call it what you want. The Canucks team within an inch of tying it up. The score, New York 3, Vancouver 2. Back to Canucks exciting playoff hockey right after this. If you Five minutes, 18 seconds left. Lafayette had a great opportunity to tie it. I thought he had hit the post, but perhaps Richter got his hand on that shot. Goaltending, it's vital. And both goaltenders have been brilliant tonight. They're coming up with the big saves. Richter trying to protect this 3-2 goal lead, a 3-2 lead. And no, I, I don't think it hit the glove. It hit the post. Yeah. It hit the post. It got by Richter's glove, and it hit the post. Lafayette, what a playoff this rookie has had. 21 years old, and he's going to get better. Now there'll be a face-off in the neutral zone. Ronning is out there. Ray and Momesso now. We're seeing different line combinations as the Canucks desperately try to get that tying goal. 3-2 to two Rangers. Jeff Brown has the puck behind the goal. The fans are yelling at us to sit down, but we can't see unless we stand because the fans in front of us stand, and that's the way it works. Now it's Hedekan back of the net, putting it off the boards, and it's cleared down the ice. Icing waved off. Momesso chasing in on Lipster. Lipster got to the puck, kicked it back of the net. Taken by Ronning, who centered it, but it's intercepted. And the Rangers start back. Craig McTavish at center. He's been a standout tonight. Into the Vancouver zone against Hedekin. McTavish controlling the puck. Dumped it back of the net to Noonan. Noonan, who's also come up with a strong game. Puts it on the boards. It bounces into the slot. But Momesso was there to clear it and get it to the neutral zone where he's tripped up in a collision in the neutral zone with Tikkanen. Puck goes back deep to Hedekin. Now there's four minutes and 20 seconds left. Lume backhands it to center ice. It's batted down by Graves. Put to the Vancouver line. Blocked there by Glenn. Up at the middle of Craven. Plays it to an open wing. Jelena overstates the puck. Glenn goes in, or uh, Craven goes into battle for it, but it's cleared outside the zone. Blocked at center by Yerky Lume. Flips it in the Ranger zone. Back for it is Leach. Lined up and missed the check back of the net from Jelena. Puck cleared back in the Vancouver zone. Lume sucking up some energy to get to that puck for an icing. And icing is called to the Rangers. 3.52 left. The faceoff will come back, though, in the Ranger zone. This is when faceoffs are critical. This is when faceoffs mean so much. Win a key faceoff, get a quality scoring chance. That's all you're asking for now if you're Vancouver. If you're the Rangers, you just want to control it and get it out of your zone as fast as you can. You know Mark Messier is going to take this draw for... Who's going to take it for Vancouver? Looks like it'll be Murray Craven. Well, actually, the Rangers set out Craig McTavish on this occasion. And he's playing his best game of the series. So he will take the draw against Craven. McTavish and Craven in the circle to the right of Richter. 3-2 Rangers lead, 3.52 left. And almost everybody in the building's on their feet. The puck goes into the corner to the right of Richter. Leach goes to it there, scoops it high, way high, out to center, and it bounces into the Vancouver zone. Didick back for the puck. Puts it off the right boards to center ice. Picked up in the neutral zone by Jelena. Ran into a check on the boards from Tikkanen, and Leach gets the puck. Across ice to Zubov, backing up with it. Puts it off the boards to center ice. Didick knocked it down there, shoots it back in. It bounces off the end boards to Brian Leach. 
Leach, two Canucks converge on him as he put the puck around to Tikkanen. Slides it to Zuboff at center ice. In over the bank. We're going through the middle. The puck is knocked away from him, and McLean is able to clear it out. Shot back in by Lowe. McLean stops it back in the net. He's so cool, right through all these playoffs, handling that puck. Now Diddick back of his goal. Forced off it by Mako as the pass is intercepted. Puck along the boards in the Vancouver zone. Finally, Cortnell gets it out. Brings it to center ice. Dumps it in. It bounces wide of the Ranger goal. Lipster playing an awful lot in this game with Bukaboom obviously injured and not playing. Now the Rangers to the attack, but a two-line pass, offside pass, stops the play. Time definitely a factor now, starting to work against the Canucks. Two minutes and 44 seconds remaining. Somehow they must squeeze out a goal to tie this game to force overtime. The Rangers clinging. Two minutes and 44 seconds away from a Stanley Cup in 54 years of misery. They pulled out everything. They opened the wallet. This was the year the Rangers were going to win the Cup. They got Mike Keenan, the biggest challenge in hockey. One of the toughest towns to coach in to the media attention. But this game has been fantastic. Jim, as you said, what a shame. One of these two teams is going to have to lose. But the overall winner has been the hockey fan because this series has been unbelievable. Messier and Linden face off in the circle to the right of Richter. 2.44 left on the clock. Rangers leading 3-2, have never trailed. We're up 2-0 after 1, 3-1 after 2. Linden has scored both Canuck goals. Waiting on the draw between Messier, who wins so many face-offs, and Linden, and he wins another one for the Rangers. Puck along the boards to the left of Richter, cleared to center ice. Messier racing in after, but Cortnell dumped it out to Linden. Across ice to Hedekin at center. Over the New York line, going wide, shot wide of the net. Puck bouncing around on the boards. Deep in range of territory. Linden in there fighting for it, but the puck is cleared high to neutral zone. Brown goes back for it. Chased by Anderson, who slashed him on the hand, and Brown felt that. As the puck is put in the Ranger zone, Leach goes back for it. And Brown goes to the bench after Anderson slash right on his hand. Now the puck brought to center by Ronnie. In over the New York line. Works to the right corner. Try to center the puck. And it's batted around on the boards and cleared out. The Canucks have to charge in there. They keep the puck in. Burry couldn't pick it up. He goes to the corner against Leach. Oh, it bounces away from Ronning in the slot. Ronning poked it back to Yerke Lume. 145 left. Vancouver putting on pressure. Burry back to the New York goal. Trip by Zuboff, and there's no call. There won't be any. The puck is cleared down the ice. Yerke racing to it. Icing is called in the Rangers with 131 left. And another face-off in the New York zone. The Rangers have dominated the face-off circle in the defensive zone, in their own zone. By my calculations, they've won 15 of 20 face-offs in the New York zone. And that's where experience shows, too. Well, the face-off department uh, has been an area the Canucks have been weak in all year long. But if ever they needed to win one, it's now. With a minute and 31 seconds remaining in regulation time, Zuboff get out of the way with a trip on Bure behind the net. As you said, Jim, there will be no calls now. And Vancouver, very smartly, has called a timeout. Pat Quinn is huddling up, trying somehow to put the right combination out on this face-off, hoping, hoping, praying that there's a goal to come yet in the next 91 seconds. But it has been great, hasn't it? Yes, so often the hype is bigger than the game, but it hasn't been that way in the Stanley Cup playoffs. I don't think it's happened often in the Super Bowl, the big build-up and the disappointing game. But at Vancouver in Game 6, the big build-up, a classic game. Tonight, a huge build-up, a great game. We have a minute and 31 seconds left. Kirk McLean is still in the net. The face-off is in the New York zone, in the circle to the right of Mike Richter. 
The Rangers have had 35 shots. The Canucks have had 29. The score is 3 to 2 New York. It's been that since Linden scored at 450 of this third period on a Canuck power play. Craig McTavish will stop for New York. Although Messier has been taking most of the crucial face-offs, McTavish has taken some in this third period, and McTavish has been one of the best players on the ice. Murray Craven will face off against him in the New York zone. Now waiting on the draw, Craven, Jelena, Adams, the Canuck forward line. The Canucks win the draw. Yuki Dume gets the puck, goes to the left corner, try to come in front, couldn't get a good shot. Puck forced back into the corner. Noonan pinned there by Adams. Jelena crashes in as well. Puck is tipped away, but the whistle blew, and the Canucks complain about what they thought was a quick whistle. There'll be another face-off in the Rangers zone. Just a gutsy win by Craven. I mentioned Rangers had won 15 to 20. Well, that's the sixth win now by the Canucks in the offensive zone. Lume going in, and Brian Leach sprawling out with a poke check. What a great play by Leach. A big game, a big series, a big playoff for Brian Leach. If the Rangers win, he will win the Conn Smythe Trophy. That is selected by the NHL Hockey Writers Association, and I doubt if they've marked the ballots yet. And they only have five writers, Jim, for the first time that are going to make the decision. Normally it's around 40 writers, only five. Face off now, Messier's out there this time. And Craven gets another draw. Lume with the puck. Wrists it in front. It's blocked by Messi. He'll put it to the corner. Craven winning two huge face-offs. But the Canucks unable to get a good scoring chance out of it. 1-10 left on the clock. Puck is cleared out the center ice. Adams having trouble controlling the puck. Puts it back to Lume. McLean is still on the ice for Vancouver. Now there's a minute to go. McLean's going to the bench. Puck shot in the Ranger zone. Cleared out the center ice. Canucks on a sloppy change, appear to have too many men on the ice. Play is going on. Brown gets the puck. Now there's 45 seconds. Six attackers for Vancouver. Puck shot in the New York zone. Richter stops it back of the net. Zuboff scoops it. And it goes out of play. And there'll be a face-off to the left of Richter with 36.2 seconds remaining. And Trevor Linden, whose face looks like a road map, a broken nose, a black guy, he's played the game of his life, just caught the stick of Zuboff behind the Ranger net. Linden, I think, might have even been cut, Jim. He's gone to the bench. He's not going off, though. It's behind the bench. Zuboff comes in, and he got the stick either of Richter or Zuboff. I think it was Zuboff, and it cracked Linden in the face. I don't know if he's bleeding or not, but he's over there. He's got a towel to his face right now. Pat Quinn is asking Linden if he's all right. Yeah, he's been cut. You can bet Trevor's not going to go on the bench. He's going to go back in there. Only 36.2 seconds remaining. Gregson now comes over to talk to the officials off ice and see if a penalty is going to be assessed. There's a lot of discussion going on. 36.2 seconds left. The faceoff will be in the Ranger zone to the left of Richter. The Canucks are complaining that the clock kept running. They think that they've been cheated out of some precious seconds. There's going to be nothing on the stick. There will not be a major penalty or a penalty of the Rangers. You can bet on that. What the Canucks want is some valuable seconds put back on the clock. So now they're replaying it up in the replay booth. They have the time clock up there. They have put some time back. Very little. Uh, very little, but almost just, two seconds. Almost two seconds, and you know, who knows? Stranger things have happened. It's gone from 36-2 to 37-8. So they did win somewhat of an argument on that. And the faceoff will be in your zone to the left of Richter. Canucks with six attackers. McLean left with about a minute to go. Rangers clinging to a 3-2 lead. A climax to a magnificent Stanley Cup final. Craven had won two big face-offs on the opposite side. Now Linden comes out against Messier. Craven beat McTavish, and then he beat Messier on two big face-offs. But it was over to the opposite circle. So the Canucks are going with Linden against Messier on this crucial draw. A little movement before the puck is dropped, so they'll line up the game. 
Linden and Messier ready on the faceoff. They battle in the circle. The puck kicked aside. Zuboff rings it on the boards and gets it out. Slides in the Vancouver zone. Brackford icing. Call in the Rangers. 28.2 seconds left. Another faceoff in New York territory. Oh, that was, that was so close. It looked like it was going to be in play, but it's going to come back. It's not easy for Ranger fans right now. They know what has happened. New Jersey scored with only seconds left to force overtime. And they're thinking, my goodness gracious, what's going to happen here? But the Canucks season, their chance for a Stanley Cup is now down to 28.2 seconds. McLean at the bench. The face-off again in the Ranger zone. And it's this time to the right of Richter, so Craven, I think, is going to take it this time against Mark Messier. Craven had won two big face-offs earlier in this hectic final minute. Craven and Messier ready for the face-off to the right of Richter. 28.2 seconds left. Rangers leading 3-2. Little movement before the puck is dropped as Momesso talks to Bure and Craven. Craven moves in now against Messier as we're ready to go. They battle in the circle. Messier got the puck, backhands it to the line, but not out. It's blocked on the board, shot around behind the net. In the corner to the left of Richter. It came to the side of the net. It bounces to the board. Linden got it to the line. Bure shot. Richter stopped it. The rebound is cleared to the corner. Cortnell tried to center it. Ten seconds left. Play still in the Ranger zone. The puck is cleared out. That should do it. Puck sliding down the ice. Bure goes back for it. Icing called. 1.1 seconds. The Rangers are celebrating, but there is going to be another faceoff in the Ranger zone. It isn't over yet, but there's 1.1 second left. You know, I was talking to Bob Cole, the play-by-play -play broadcaster, before the game, Jim, and he was talking to Brian Williams, the advisor of officials, and he said, you know, if time is going out, you know, don't blow the whistle with, you know, 1.1. That's if one team had a considerable lead, but that's not the case here. There's only one goal that separates these two teams, but now they're saying they want the cup, and it looks, unless Vancouver can come up with a miracle here, the New York Rangers, sadly to say for Vancouver hockey fans, will win the Stanley Cup in 1994. Although he didn't win the draw cleanly, Messier did a good job to get possession after that face-off. And eventually the Rangers got it out along the boards all the way down the ice. Bury looked back at the clock, and he raced after the puck a little quicker. He might have got another second up there for this face-off. But he looked back, then raced down the ice, maybe to see whether or not it was going to be icing. And then he picked up speed to get to the puck. Now there's 1.1 sec the face-off in the New York zone. And in that last uh, face-off, the Canucks finally did get a shot. I think it was Burry was able to zing one from way out. Richter had to come up with a big save. The shots are 35-30 at this stage of the game in favor of New York. And if there's any more shots, it'll be on Richter and off a face-off. That's the only chance. McTavish will take it for New York, although Messier is also out there. It looks like Linden will probably take it for Vancouver. We'll wait to see. Maybe even Pavel Bury will take it. We'll wait to see what they're going to try and do on the draw. There's so little time left. They've moved the clock again. 1.6 seconds. So they put a half a second up there. McTavish and Pavel Bury will take the face off. You know that Bury's going to try and shoot off the draw. At least that I would expect. I haven't seen Bury take many face-offs. He's taking a big one now. Bury again. They battle in the circle. Puck goes to the corner. The game is over. And the New York Rangers have won the Stanley Cup for the first time since 1940, defeating the Vancouver Canucks 3-2 to two in a classic climax to a great series. And indeed it was a great series, and I'm glad uh, Jim Robson ended it by saying that, because it is, uh, it's almost like we almost apologize for playing it uh, for you, because it still hurts. Uh, ten years later, I'm sure for many Vancouver fans, the gut-wrenching seventh game of the Stanley Cup Finals, some glorious chances, but, you know, as we hear that game in context, we're reminded of the... Yeah, I know, it's just... It's a... 
it's a good you know it was a good ride and you know it's, it's just you know it's just coming it's like uh just comes crashing down and uh, all of a sudden you know it's like to be the happiest guy in the world or the more, you know the saddest person in the world and right now that's that's how i feel well, the fans back home uh, they're, they're going to obviously uh, show great support for you later this uh, morning when you get home but uh, what about the, the last week or so what a ride it's been with them yeah i know we uh you know we tried to uh to bring it home to vancouver and it's it's too bad for everybody you know we would have had a good uh, we had a good time all together uh, this week but there's nothing uh, we can do about it now just i don't know what to say <laughs> Didn't know what to say. Uh, Sergio Momesso here was Pat Quinn after the same game of a decade ago. Oh, it's, I mean, they'll, they know that right now that it's positive, but uh, I'm sure just, just feeling about the loss that uh, something got away from them. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, I believe to a man we thought we were going to win this thing, and, uh, and suddenly it's taken away, you know. And, um, in the next few days, obviously, you think about a lot of things. Uh, we don't know uh, what our team will look like next year or anything else, but they'll dwell on the things that uh, have happened, and certainly it'll be a positive experience. They'll carry it with them all their lives. From Pat Quinn, we spoke with George, then a Sports Talk regular. George, it's hard to put in words how this one must feel, but uh, I hope proud is the first word. Well, certainly proud of the players. They were outstanding. Uh, it hurts like hell. It's uh, it's pretty painful right now. I'm so close. Uh, in the last three minutes, Lafayette's shot rings off the post. It's almost a game of inches, isn't it? Yeah, and I'll tell you, I sure don't. I don't know if it's appropriate to comment about refereeing, but boy, oh boy, we just kept getting put in a hole and kept fighting back, and uh, uh, I, I, I don't think it was uh, deserved. And uh, we came here to win this thing, and and uh, it hurts like hell that we didn't. And I said the same thing. I mean, you, you guys were three power plays in before you got yours, and uh, almost as if Keenan's lobbying the last two days had an effect. Yeah, and, and by the time we get one, it's 3-1, and uh, they got the third, their third power play, their third goal, their second power play goal, was after a couple of phantom dives, and it, it just... You know, we tried to, we heard that uh, Gregson was the ref for Game 7, and we called the league and said, please, can you, uh, can you get a guy like McCurry in there or Van Helleman? And the Rangers did the same thing. They wanted McCurry as well. And uh, we got a guy who, in my opinion, is a, you know, is a scared guy and makes calls for the home team. And, and uh, boy, I, I guess it's, uh, it's not appropriate to talk like this, but I, I really feel like... Uh, that uh, you know, had things uh, been fair from that, and uh, we would have won this thing. As it was, it was uh, a battle back all night, and uh, you really owned the third period for a large part, didn't you? Yeah, this is a tough building to come out and play well early in because uh, uh, their fans are incredible, and it's it is intimidating. But our guys came on, and uh, the latter part of the game, I thought we were playing the way we had played in game five and six, and. Uh, you know, if we had another five or six minutes, we would have maybe tied it and won the damn, damn thing. So we're proud of these guys, but certainly uh, in a lot of pain right now. You know, as I stand here, George, I'm amazed at how fine a line there is to winning that thing and not winning it. Yeah, if we ever do win it, it'll be uh, so sweet in, in light of what we've just experienced. Uh, it's, it hurts. It hurts like hell. And we could, you know... We could add three or four real good players to our lineup next year, but still not advanced as far as we have this year. That's the way this game goes, and there are 26 teams, and it's tough to get to where we are. That's why it hurts so, it hurts so much right now. I know uh, Pat did such a wonderful job getting this team to this point. Uh, he's said on the podium tonight that he's coached his last game. Uh, it's almost a sad thing now when you see the job he did as coach here. Yeah, he had mentioned uh, a while ago that he was considering stepping down, and I wasn't sure what he was going to do. And if he, that's what he's mentioned, then... Uh, that saddens me because he's a, a good man and good for this game and good for the players and treats players well. And I wish all coaches would coach their teams like Pat does. Uh, uh, um, he's a 
believes in human decency and treats people very, very well, from whether it's our training staff or doctors or players or people walking in off the street.